<laughs> no, no, Alex. Yay, Buffalo beer. Fuck yeah. <laughs> and with that, we're starting our episode. Welcome everyone to another episode of Your Brain on Hops, where we love beer and we're based out of Buffalo. So we decided to have a Buffalo series. Uh, we mentioned some breweries, even recorded at some breweries so far uh, over the course of this podcast. But what we decided to do is really uh, get some beers on the podcast from some breweries who we haven't featured yet or haven't really talked about too much, because there are quite a bit of breweries in the Buffalo area. So over this and a few more podcasts to follow, we'll be bringing on some beers that are either special beers from breweries that we know and love and have talked about before, or new beers from breweries that we really haven't talked about too much yet on the podcast. Ode to Buffalo Beer. Yes. Very, very much. So delicious. Indeed. Just in time for, I think from now, two weeks from today is or so, Buffalo Beer Week. So it could be better timing, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And speaking of timing... The beer that we have brought to us now by Chris is from Flying Bison. It is their Erie County Fair beer. So Chris, if you care to elaborate, what inspired you to get this one? Thank you, Tim. Alex inspired <laughs> me to get this one. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> so I was, I was thinking of what breweries are near where I work, and I work in the, near the Cobblestone area in Buffalo. <clears throat> and, uh, and there's a few breweries around there. And decided to go to Flying Bison to get one. When I went there with a few friends from work, ran into Alex, who was at Flying Bison after the Day of it Caring, the volunteer day. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so while we were there, we were talking about what beer to get from Flying Bison, um, uh, whether we'd go with the flagship or one of their seasonal beers or a specialty beer. And we decided to go with the specialty beer, the, the beer that's brewed for Erie County. And part of that was Alex started talking about a competition that went into it. So I'll hand it off to Alex to talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, I don't remember exactly when the competition was. I know it was earlier in the year this year, but uh, um, it's a homebrew competition for the fair, and the winning beer gets to brew it at Flying Bison, and Flying Bison actually bottles it and puts it out on the market and everything. Um, I read the label uh, when I was at the fair uh, yesterday, and... It actually has the brewers' names on it and everything, so it's it's pretty cool that they actually recognize the home brewer for the beer that actually won the competition. You mean they actually give credit? That's true. That's awesome. Wow. Right? <laughs> uh, do you do you remember who was the home brewer on this one? Uh, there were two of them. Um, I believe I only remember one of the names. I believe it was John John Crossett. I believe his name was. Um, I don't remember the other one. Okay. Um, but if you pick up a six pack of this at, I believe you can get it at Wegmans, Tops, oh, yeah. uh, Consumers, a lot of them. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe uh, if you just pick one up a six pack, uh, their names are right on there. Cool. Nice. I'm. I mean, yeah. I recommend picking up a six pack, especially while it's still hot out. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is. I see why they picked it for an Erie County themed beer. I mean, yeah. you're outside in the heat. This is really easy drinking pale ale. Yeah. Hot summer. Yeah. yeah. I had one yesterday when I was sitting at the bar at the fair. Was that uh, was that an enjoyable experience? It was. It was. Did, um, did you have only one? I had one of these, and I had a Citradelic from New Belgium. Mm. Which yeah, I, just, I just I just love that beer. Went to the fair myself today, and they uh, uh, had some pretty good offerings there. I always love going to the fair. It makes me feel like I'm definitely back at home to be able to go to the fair again. Uh, with my sister and my son, and of course get to see the in, uh, enjoyable nature of him feeding goats and sheep and all sorts of stuff, and then <laughs> now getting to sip the beer that it's, it's made for, it's, it's all coming to a full experience for me. It's been, been enjoyable. You can sip a good bit of it, too. This is uh, 5.5 ABV, so not quite sessionable, but still low enough that you can drink a bunch of them in the heat. Oh, yeah. uh, 40 IBU, so it has a hop character, but nothing too strong, too potent. Yeah. So just a little higher than an old black balloon if you're going to sit in the beer tent anyway. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's true. Drink something with some good taste to that's it. That's the thing, though. Erie County Fair does not have beer tents. Yes, they do. They're, well, they have... They did last year. I know there's at least two like actual bars. Yeah, there's a beer garden I saw today, yeah. and there's another Yeah, no, beer tent, area. beer garden. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I didn't see the tent. <laughs> it, I just yeah, I hung out at the bar. And whatnot, and you can, but you can't leave the tent with alcohol. You right, you can't leave the bar area yeah. without with the alcohol either. Do you have to be in one of those areas, or can you grab a beer and walk around with it? No, you got to stay in the area, the like slightly yeah. fenced in. It's not like a 
gate or anything, but it's yeah, it's fenced in. Got it. And there's a bouncer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's not quite as cool as East Aurora. <laughs> no, the container loss. <laughs> true, true. And I didn't have. There's to, not many places that are. <laughs> Fair. Today I did not have. I'm in the process of getting my New York license, so they are sent in my Maryland one. So I did not have a permanent or a picture ID with me to try anything there. So, and I was with my. Really, they didn't. So they didn't think you were. Oh well, no, I didn't. I didn't try. Oh, okay. I just figured, uh, whether than okay. have a discussion about it, just say, yeah, I just won't. I'll just enjoy the fresh squeezed lemonade. I think when so. I'm, I do now. I'm with a little boy with me. Yeah, when I'd say with the kid. Like yeah. <laughs> oh, I can impress him. Anything. <laughs> this is true. look at those look at those bright eyes and that, those young cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep that going for another twenty years, and I'll be happy. <laughs> so I've actually never been to the Erie County Fair. So what? Ever? What? Yeah. You lived in Buffalo your whole life, or the yeah, area? Yeah, the area. Wow. Sometimes I feel like I don't know you. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Just never like I don't want to. to or? <laughs> Not really one thing. Literally, we are well, ending our yeah, friendship. I've never initiated it, mm-hmm. and no one else was ever like, <laughs> "Hey, we're going," and yeah, just uh, <laughs> just never I, happened. You are missing out on some high quality maple products in the one egg uh, center building. They have the Merle's maple, fantastic maple yeah. ice cream. I just had today for three bucks. Mm. Delicious stuff. My son's face was covered in it. Um, and he may have shared his cone with Dad a little bit. But it's okay. It was delicious. What did a good you, guy. Did you try room. any of the, uh, they had the, uh, like the whole, well, they had um, a bunch of different syrups. Oh, yeah. Like the dark and the, like, the four different all the way down, like mm-hmm. dark to light and everything. The and they also had, maple? I bought a bottle of the bourbon. Did you? Bourbon barrel aged maple syrup. Uh-huh. I bought a bottle last year, and I will buy a bottle every year That's until delicious. I stop going to it. Yeah, so, in other words, every year. Maple weekend is uh, coming up. No, no, that already happened. That already happened. Yeah, before I, it was before I moved back. It's they do all the local maple places in Western New York. They have just samplings, and you can buy lots of stuff and enjoy lots of maple syrup and. Waffles, and it's delicious. Yeah, sugar high. And yes. It sounds wow. like diabetes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's fantastic. Well, that's why they hold a Diabetes Awareness Week the week after. Mm-hmm. Ah, yes. <laughs> what the hell did I do? I should hold this before. <laughs> Speaking of which, I don't think I've ever had a, to get back to beer, a good, a really good maple beer. I've tasted a few. Oh. But yeah, I don't I think I've one. had one. Really yeah, I had the French toast. Which one was that? The French toast. Oh beer. yes, yes, that's the one. The French toast beer from yep. Beckett and Ales. Okay, that was an excellent one. If you can, I haven't seen it out right now. Right now they're doing all their creamsicle stuff. Um, yeah, the strawberry yeah, creamsicle and the double okay. toasted marshmallow that's out there. Oh, uh, double toasted marshmallow. Where do you find this stuff? Ooh. We've had that on the show, haven't Where we? Else? ABW. <laughs> I, don't think we, I don't think we've actually had that on the show. Before. I don't think we have either. All right, we're going to have remember. that on the show because you dentist. need to have it. We should have a breakfast themed episode. That's not really a breakfast. Ads. Oh, yeah. You know, mix well, I can definitely I'll do coffee. I'll make steak and eggs. Yeah. Oh, okay, I'm on board. <laughs> I'm on board. So the, the, the All Dan has to say is steak and eggs. I'm on board. <laughs> the, the double toast and marshmallow we do need to have, but I agree, not super breakfast. That being said, I love the idea of a breakfast episode. Yes, with steak and eggs. With, well, well, of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> course. Not a key factor. I'm not going to do a breakfast episode and not have steak and eggs. Yeah, of course. <laughs> with all of us just chewing, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> steak, too. We're going to be chewing a lot. Don't worry, yeah. listeners. We'll have subtitles for the. I don't know. Dan steaks kind of just melt in your mouth. That's true. Yes. Oh, <laughs> yeah. His steaks are so they're not juicy. Exactly, and... Yeah, they're not exactly oh. chewy. After a five-hour Kmart shift, that steak was pretty good. <laughs> my meat melts in your mouth. Yes. Oh, he had to go there. He made it. Work. Oh my God! Please, just like single that section out right there. <laughs> just, can we just have Cut that as like it. a <laughs> post it? <laughs> That's. <laughs> That's how all of our episodes are going to start now. Oh, man. <laughs> Dan seductively talking about his meat. No, that's going to be on one of my t-shirts in the future. Ah. <laughs> Snow in the air. <laughs> now, back to Flying Bison. How long have they actually been around? Because as long as I've been actually drinking craft beer, they have been around, like, whether it's Rusty yeah. Chain or 90. any of those. They're, I mean, they're at Sabres games, even. You can get them. Um, don't quote me. Okay. And I see both of them looking You're at You're on up. the air. This is this is a this is a an internet off. A Google off. Google off. Oh. I'm gonna go ninety three. 
It's not really Google off if I don't care who wins. I'm just trying to find the answer. <laughs> Yes, I'm 21 years and older. Goddamn websites. <laughs> I also was just cursing the fact that it asked me if I was 21 years or older. I want to know. At least, to know. At, least, at least it asked you yes or no and not put in your put in oh, your birthday. Yeah. That's, that's a yeah. good call. That is annoying as hell. Because who the hell puts in their actual birthday? I, I literally go to the year and scroll really quickly until it hits like the 80s and then I hit something. Alex is admitting to fraud. Now I'm the uh, I'm 32 <laughs> years old and I don't give a shit. <laughs> give me a quick yes or no. <laughs> now Flying Bison is actually a brewery I just went to for the first time this year because usually while I was living in Maryland, whenever I came home, I tried to hit a new one, whether it was Rusty Nickel, Resurgence. I was there for the grand opening, but Flying first Bison. First brewery to operate to. in the city proper since Iroquois Brewing closed its doors in 1972. That doesn't give me when you showed up. <laughs> so the internet is not helping Dan. Chris. Yeah, it was, I was very impressed with the brewery. I itself. also found very that. Nice. Uh, by the way, I heard something about Iroquois. Uh, I think CBW, CBW is going to be making some Iroquois yeah. brews. Oh, yeah. yeah. They're doing. Wow. I guess they're doing like the original Iroquois flagship beer. Yeah, yeah very they go cool. on eBay right now. All of Iroquois like old prints and everything like that skyrocketing through the roof. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Good because I have I have a pristine Iroquois like beer tray. And it is in perfect condition. And two years ago, when I bought it at a garage sale for a dollar, I looked online and it was going for about like seventy-five to eighty-five dollars. Mm-hmm. Dang! So if it goes up now, sweet. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. So the brewery was now. I'm not super sure what the difference is here. Open for business in 2000, but it was hmm. incorporated in 1995. Hmm. Huh. So they were brewing in the early 90s and then finally got it going in 2000. Yeah, yeah. It might it might be the uh, the actual brewery tasting room mm-hmm. I was talking about, mm-hmm. but okay. exactly brewing since the nineties, yeah. and then like Dan had said, first one since first one really in the area since Iroquois closed during the the horrible horrible beer consolidation decades of the mid twentieth century. Yes, got to read the audacity of hops. Good book about the history of craft beer. Yeah, it's good. Speaking of the history of craft beer, um, Iroquois. And CBW, the owner of CBW, Ethan Cox, he actually wrote a book all about Buffalo beer and the history of Buffalo beer. And it was a great book. Um, But the second I heard that they were doing a a version of the original Iroquois beer, I was like, duh. (laughs) Like, of course they would. (laughs) Makes sense. I bet they'll do it really well, too. Hmm. I'm really looking forward to checking out their new space. Yeah, me too. Everyone in Buffalo, like a lot of guys, are now getting new breweries and spaces going. Uh, you've got mm-hmm. Flying Bison that's now doing theirs. CBW's just had their, I think, their party to. They already opened. Yeah, they already opened and they closed down the original, or is that one still now? It's still a tasting room. I'm very confused on that. <laughs> I saw something around, like around that. I think they closed down the tasting room and they're still brewing there. Okay. Yeah, they still own the property. They right. still have some equipment there for small batch, but right. I think, I think they're I think they're doing one. a lot of uh, like test batches or sours or something over there. That they, I mean, like sours makes sense because they can keep it away from the main product. What the hell? <laughs> oh, you can you can ignore the beep. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's it's the time to do it, especially with yeah. uh, like Buffalo growing the real estates. It just been, has been on the rise for the past couple of decades. So. Rusty Nichols opening. There's a new spot on 36, I think 36 Broadway. 42 North is trying to do an expansion in East Aurora. Yep. There's like three more breweries that are um, going to pop up within the next year. I believe Resurgence is opening a place in Rochester. I would think it would be really neat to get to go to one of these places and do, do a show or at least talk to another, another brewery interview. Yeah, just like cool. we do with uh, Big Ditch. CBW, mm-hmm. hint, hint. Yeah, call any of you guys. Hint, hint. Yeah, right. <laughs> I think it's just speaking about Buffalo beers. I think it's pretty great that I mean, every once in a while in the paper you'll see some market has reached saturation and some local breweries are closing, or there's too many of them, or one of the original ones in the area. Um, Not Buffalo, but Buffalo, We're yeah, it's drugs. still. <laughs> It's 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 still growing, which is just pretty good. Super Bowl win. I think we're gonna keep putting out more breweries. <laughs> Segway football. So it was a cl- oh no 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 just quick. So Yay it was, football! It was, um, <laughs> Anheuser Busch. I think it's the Cleveland Browns building yes. a free beer locker for if for the first win that they get, it will dispense <laughs> free beer. And someone gave me the uh, greatest idea. 
it's a little sad for Buffalo. Oh, no. But it could also be very good. And this goes to the brewers out there. A special cooler that will only unlock if we win the Super Bowl. But you sell her some Imperial Stouts and some nicer things. Well, February so would be a good a time for a beer like that. Yes. Yeah. A yeah. beer that can be aged. So, yeah, that, that yeah. does sound so like it. So, in the heart of winter, it, where you it want takes some a while, right. and, and you're and still guaranteed at that point, something, something delicious. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just, in, in Buffalo in the winter in February by then, we're ready for the thaw, but it's not going to happen for another month. Two <laughs> or, months. or two. Maybe April. I do. Nobody like, wants a stale Labatt. But no, that's true. Can enjoy well, it that's enough. true because like they just yeah. they just put those in like the past in this past week. So they have at least a month until well a little less than a month until the first game, and there's I mean it's the first win, not the first game, yep. the first win. Yeah. And they put ten of these things into ten different bars in Cleveland. Go Tyrod, go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's his name? Or Mayfield. Or Mayfield, yes. Baker. It's Tyrod. Tyrod? It's Tyrod. <laughs> he has said multiple times prior to coming to Buffalo that his name, like he's, I, hi, I'm Tyrod Taylor. Uh, he has said Tyrod. <laughs> Tyrod. So I, I really like this idea, Dan, but it could be very bad for my health. Because if <laughs> Buffalo wins a Super Bowl and I pop You're this not open. You're drink at all, Chris. <laughs> no, I will. <laughs> if Buffalo wins a Super Bowl and I pop this open and there's high ABV cellared beers, I'm not going to stop celebrating after a Buffalo Super Bowl. <laughs> All those beers are being drunk. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, this... During the celebration, because you just realized we won the Super Bowl. Exactly. That's very God. bad. That's or way save too much. Some beer. of them because okay. you're going to want to keep one of those bottles. I'm not going to stop celebrating the fact that we won a Super Bowl. Yes, That's but true. at the same time, you have to think the Buffalo Bills winning a Super Bowl. Buffalo is going to be celebrating for easily a week. Minimum. So, I mean, like... So, free beer week? The the city's going to, like, shut down. <laughs> like, yeah, God, no people going are going to be taking... Uh, Monday, no, no one's going into no, work. No, Sorry, no, no, no one is no. going into work. School's about to close. This doesn't work for me. That I, I can work from home. <laughs> oh. uh, I'm just going to have to work from home for the whole week. Bummer. While while Buffalo's riots uh, simmer down, <laughs> I have this feeling. Just that bring your I'm computer to, to bars. Ooh, yep. good good call. Just I'm gonna have hope to work that your boss doesn't listen. I work for a plumbing industry, and I have a bad feeling if we win the Super Bowl. Oh boy, a lot of plumbing going on. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, why I wonder? With speaking of sports and the brewery we're talking about, has has there been a flying bison, bison's beer? With the minor league team being what it is, and right now they have a hot streak. This, I don't, this new guy, the I don't head is resurgence. Yeah, that's resurgence. Oh, yeah. That's the what Conehead IPA or, or whatever. Conehead Sabres or and Bills yeah. have the Southern Tier One Buffalo. Yeah. Um, uh, Hamburg uh, did the five fifty for that's for WGR. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Huh. Which I actually like that beer. I haven't had it yet. Oh, no, no, no. I did. I liked it. I'm trying to think. No, there's right. hell. And I don't mind one buffalo. It's fine. It's like a better tasting light beer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so on the on the sports thing, all I have to say is right outside my section now, there is a Lloyd's at the stadium. Well, that's in your section. I walk out of my section and Lloyd is right there. Oh boy. (laughs) Yeah, I'm not yeah. Like a huge. I don't like cabbage uh, in my. Tacos. But amplify that by like ten times. I don't like cabbage. I don't like raw chicken. <laughs> don't get the chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Done. <Beef taco>. <laughs> Problem solved. When do you use a goddamn deep fryer? Goddamn teenagers. I've gotten chicken literally, not literally, but I'd say seventy-five percent of the time I get Lloyd. If I don't get a special, I get chicken. Never once. I, that's why yeah. I always go with pork. The pork, fine. I I go with the beef. I do yeah, really like the beef. And this is not... This yeah, is, the that, braised I'm beef sorry. is really Let me good. reiterate. That is not directed specifically at Lloyd's. That is directed specifically at the food industry yeah. for every kid who does not know how to use a goddamn deep fryer because it's happening more often than not. I <laughs> rarely eat chicken that I haven't cooked myself. If I go out, I rarely eat chicken. I, I don't was trust they do people chicken and waffles in the kitchen. Because I'm cheap. Uh, I think, yeah, I think, it was, <laughs> I think it was Lloyd's. They did a chicken and waffles, I think, burrito. Sounded delicious. Smelled delicious. Tasted delicious till I realized. Uh oh. <laughs> it was a yakitori burrito. <laughs> <laughs> Lightly uh, cooked. I probably trusted more if I was in Japan. 
That's fair. But with that being said, I think it's time to move on to a new beer. So let's go grab that. Oh, perfect open. I'm so I hard. Had to speak. <laughs> <laughs> what we're about to drink is from Thin Man Brewing. It is their. Let me make sure I. I Get this name absolutely right. The Let Me Put You in the Picture New England IPA. 6% ABV. Um, awkwardly enough, getting ready for this pod, I had a run in with my son while he was in a stroller. <laughs> oh, <laughs> to go get this. Uh, you were running. Your, your baby boy drinking beer by the bar. Y- yeah. Um, no, he was, he was good. He was excited to be. He likes loud noises, mm. and it was a very festive crowd at the time. and. He uh, man loved is. it, and now I, I only ran in there just to get the crawler, but I wanted to make sure I tasted it, so as I was pouring it on this episode, I could, in fact, um, give a little insight. I found it delicious. It's smooth. It's small. Uh, it's small? And by small, I meant I had a tasting, like the shot glass size tasting. <laughs> wow, that came out wrong. Um, it's good, it's small. Yeah, we can cut that out. Uh, but we won't. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Crap. Um, but anyway, so Lennon was enjoying his time while I took my little tiny sip of sample of beer. And I thought it was fantastic, so I'm very curious what you guys think. So, Tim, yeah. you're still new. I am. Realize, we are all human. That shit stays in the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have yeah. those things that you guys say. We'll cut this out. No, that was crazy to say that. So like, that's why certain episodes have not made it. Yeah, to air. and that's why, like, you hear us say, like, "Oh yeah, we'll just cut that out." And, and like, it, it, no, you it. already heard it. <laughs> yeah, really. There's You're, too many gems that we say that are just like, "Oh no, no, no." Or even like last time we talked about putting in a gong, and I was like, "Oh, I wonder if we did that." And I'm listening to the episode, and I hear that boom. I'm like, "Whoa!" Like, yep, yeah, twice. twice. <laughs> yes, twice the gong. Yeah, the gong. <laughs> but yeah, so cheers, guys. Cheers. I like it. Easy I do drinking. too. It's juicy. It is I easy drinking. Juicy. I go. It's kind of clean to me. It's very clean. But it's it's, re- it's almost it's nice and citrusy for me. Mm-hmm. It's refreshing. It's but it doesn't give me that aggressiveness, mm-hmm. which is kind but of what I'm looking a, for. It still has a lingering bitterness to it. Mm-hmm. The description they have it's it's a collaboration that they did uh, with Alewife, and it is a hazy juice bomb brewed with Galaxy. Pardon my pronunciation. Mm. Motueka? Motueka? Motueka. And Waime uh, aromas and flavors of passion fruit, lime, pine, and orange. Crawler is available, which is what I have. I love the labels on their crawler. Yes. Inspiration in a liquid state. Yeah. We all need that. Yes. Time. That's why I drink it every day. Mm. <laughs> a doctor's orders. Actually, my doctor probably order, would order me to drink less. <laughs> Shh, doctors. <laughs> yeah, no. That's why we have, uh, you know, websites for that. WebMD. Got yeah. us covered. <laughs> WebMD. Oh, oh, I have a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> Thin Man has always been a, I don't want to say uh, hit or miss, almost like a weird place. But every time I go in there, like, they're always doing something, but their stuff is always, I never have not liked anything and i do know that they are they do or they're trying or they were at least trying to do more sours stuff like that um and the Shatzel, i think it's what Shatzel corp or Shatzel group as a whole they're a massive force in buffalo but more and more i honestly when i look at thin man the amount of collaborations and the amount of people that that man knows <laughs> they're a force that's going to be i think is going to be the next big thing in buffalo that is going to be huge, and I think he's already trying to do an expansion already. I, I think they I bought the believe, building next door or something like that. I believe that started like a year ago. Yeah, yeah. he put, already put in the plans for that, but you've got, who did they do it with, uh, Barrier? No, they didn't do, was it? No, uh, they did it Other Half. Else. I think they did a collab with Other Half. Other Half. They've done a collab um, with a couple They've done it with people. several they, people already. They brew Arrogant Bastard. Yep. They have the rights to brew Arrogant Bastard from Stone. Mm-hmm. Wow. That was pretty neat when they started doing that. Yeah. yeah. That was I nice mean, beer. did you guys have it at the brewery? Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. Fresh Arrogant Bastard it's is awesome. wild. Yeah. It's a fun name to say, It's too. a good beer yeah. to go yeah. back to. <laughs> That's a fresh Arrogant Bastard. <laughs> I was at uh, ABW, and it was just, we were all hanging out one night, and they put started putting Arrogant Bastard in the 19.2 cans. Woo. I was like, you know what? I need right. to go back. I just need to go back to the ba- the beginning. And that was like the earliest like 
beers I could think of. And it's not an IPA, but it's got a nice bitterness, this mulligan. I was like, this is exactly where I am right now. Mm. And that's where I've kind of been heading. I've been loving just the good ales. And, and like, no, no weird glasses, just pints and mugs and just... <laughs> pints? Oh, so good. It comes in pints? Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Do I need to unfriend both of you? You're drinking out of pints. Hey, tulip or die, but I still love a good pint. <laughs> I've also tulip been watching, a, I've also been watching a lot of oh, Constantine. <laughs> English bastard. Now I doing the one Just thing, accept it. <laughs> <laughs> the one thing I do have to say I, I love about Thin Man is their location. Elmwood is a great place to have a brewery. It's a great place to have any bar. There's lots mm-hmm. of good bars down there. Yeah. But when I, I remember when they were opening, and it probably was you, Dan, that told me that I should go check it out. Um, and I came back to town for, I don't know if it was Christmas or Easter or some holiday. And I said, okay, well, I, I, I usually try when I come back to visit to meet up with everybody once. So I picked Thin Man Brewing. We went upstairs, and it was awesome. I sampled several beers. Um, and just looking at their website, they did say, as far as we were talking about with who they've collabed with, they have they have a lot of, as they say, friends in the industry. McKellar, New York City, Gun McKellar. Hill, KCBC, Collective Arts, Sloop, Three Sons, and more. And oh. they're currently expanding their barrel aging program, which sounds fantastic. And they're certainly trying to innovate going into Bellwoods. 2018. They did an amazing collaboration with Bellwoods out of Toronto. That was a delicious beer I got to have at the uh, 42 North uh, beer event that they pulled off. Um, full circle fest. Full cir- yeah, full circle fest. They had they, uh, I think it was uh, Rudy showed up and he has like this is like the last bottle, <laughs> <laughs> and he's like you need to try this and I'm like holy shit I need more and he's like we don't have any more and neither does Bellwoods <laughs> and I'm <laughs> like why would you give me a taste and take it away? <laughs> cue, cue Dan Should doing, doing a Darth corner. Vader. No. <laughs> Oh, Cute dad just stuff. shivering in the corner going, <laughs> <laughs> I need more. Y'all got any more. of that collaboration? <laughs> <laughs> uh, one thing about this, too, is uh, I really enjoy IPAs with longer names. Don't know why. <laughs> I do. Let let me put you in the picture. That's you a weird like a good fetish. Uh, it's a, it, it is a weird fetish. I, but I that's, I mean, that's the best fetishes are weird. You look a, but like, you look I a good play guess on so. words. A good pun. And speaking of that, um, I looked up the Evil Twin beers I've had recently and untapped, and because their a lot of their names are great, so I just want to read mm-hmm. off a few of these. Um, the beers themselves very good, of course. Evil Twin, they're going to put out a good product, mm-hmm. but the names. I must find a truth that is true for me. New England style IPA, once a day, every day. Give yourself an IPA, uh, double good IPA. Very good rule for life. The only thing Don't I know. Doctors and doctors. <laughs> The only thing I know is that I know nothing IPA, New England style IPA. I speak the language of television, an American style IPA. I'm sensing a trend. They're all, <laughs> they're, they're all great names. So when I see a, a beer named something like, let me put you in the picture, it's almost like the name of the beer itself tells a story. Mm-hmm. It does have a very high rating right now. I mean, there's not a lot of ratings on it in Untapped. It's sitting at a uh, 4.05, which is very good. And I, I personally would put it pretty high because I do enjoy this beer a lot. I... Definitely hope to get back there to get another crowler or several tastings. So Not with my son next time. Be, before I moved out of Buffalo, the apartment I had was a seven-minute walk from Thin Man. <laughs> that was Oof. that was nice. I got a lot of crawlers while I was there. I, I think I'm eight minutes away drive time. I don't know what the walk would probably be quite a bit, but... <laughs> um, hey, just, just take Landon out for a stroll. Yeah, you know. <laughs> hey, honey, what? I'm taking the boy to the bar. Yeah. <laughs> He loves it, and everyone loves him. <laughs> everyone knows his name. It's like, cheers. <laughs> Tim! Just say They know his name. They don't know my name. They know my son's name. He's adorable. Landon! <laughs> Get this boy some milk. <laughs> Tim just walks in with, like, holding him up like Simba. <laughs> and no! Uh, hey, uh. <laughs> everyone bows down in the bar. <laughs> oh, God, that would be adorable. It would be. I don't know how happy my wife would be, but it would be good. Sorry, Laura. Hey, if she saw a video of it, she'd probably laugh her ass she off. Would. She <laughs> would. <laughs> then she'd love it. Yeah, true. And she also knows that that way, at least, there's always a babysitter. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's watching. If I'm <laughs> and now we are drinking Big Ditches 
Bidwell Wild. Um, this uh, they call it a New York, Western New York Wild Ale. Um, this beer is a very simple recipe that they put in two barrels. And there's the beep again. They put this into barrels, and they actually took fruit, leftover fruit from the vendors at the Elmwood um, Market, and they put that fruit into the barrels. So there is no brewer's yeast used in this beer. It is all wild yeast and bacteria from the western New York area cool. fermenting this beer. Wow. So that's where our Bidwell of, comes from. Right. Off of the Maybe. fruit. That was left over at the market one day. This beer is two years in the making. It was fermenting in the barrels for two years, and it was in Leonard Oaks Estate Winery barrels. That's pretty great. It's growing it, on me. The uh, the sour. I mean, yeah, it's it's very puckering. Very the sourness. Yes. See, but it's but there is a but there is a sweetness underlying it as well. That a lot of like quote unquote sour beers that you do pucker with don't have so there's there's body to the sourness i guess mm -hmm. it's sweet and fruity up front yeah oh yeah super thick and hazy too yeah i'm struggling to come up with whatever that back of the mouth taste is it's like that combination of just old fruit or whatever it is it's just hitting you and it's good i like it but and that's coming from a guy that doesn't really vinegar. like sours apple cider vinegar apple cider vinegar mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yep just a Perhaps. little bit. Yeah. Not nothing is like it's not as stringent or anything with that. Yeah. It's, actually really it's definitely nice. not as strong as apple no. cider vinegar because no. like a tablespoon of that in water they say to have every day. I'm sorry, fuck that. No, it's <laughs> tough. Yeah. It, I'm sorry. I, I tried it for a week and I was like, I can't stomach it because stomach if you put in crap. a gallon of water, maybe. Right. Yeah. Then I can have that over a day. <laughs> yeah. That's fine. That's I can fine. Have a tablespoon of this and some water. <laughs> Yeah, I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind doing this every morning by itself, <laughs> drinking some of it on its own. Yeah, it's got a little tartness, and it's, it's got a little bit of a almost like a little punch just in the, the beginning. But it, it's nice. It, it's actually growing. This is something that's actually growing on me. Yeah, I was gonna say you dumped it a little bit into each of our okay, glasses. Okay, <laughs> if you listen to the show, I am not the biggest fan of sours yet. Hey, so no. it's but when I can find something that I actually like that continuously grows on my palate. I will always say, take it and say, hey, this isn't so bad. But some of them, like Chris has said, just just are puckering and just almost sour to be sour. Like, I mean, str like just, this isn't even enjoyable. I'm just drinking straight citric acid at this point. <laughs> there is the occasional sour that does, I mean, I forgot who made it. And I don't want to mock them on the show, so I won't say them. But I think of it. I don't know the brewery. I don't know what it is. <laughs> but I remember tasting one. It might have been an Allagash one. Sorry, my friend Justin up there that like, loves that stuff. Oh, I do love delicious. their brewery. It's delicious. But one sour I think I had, I thought it was from them. It reminded me of those moments when we were kids and we had, remember Warheads? Oh, and yeah. you put like several of those uh -huh. in your mouth. <laughs> and regretted it for a minute. Yes. <laughs> for and I remember drinking and just being like, minute. whoa, I feel like the guy on the cover of the logo of the Warhead candy. But now I have <laughs> since then... Open my eyes to the world of sours, and they are quite delicious. You know, though, just because one brewery puts out a beer that mm -hmm. is that sour doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad brewery. Because yeah. obviously, Elgash has done a lot of really good. Oh, things. they have some delicious stuff. Um, yeah, like you said, one beer that I can think of though is Westbrook Goza. Mm. That beer, I feel like it is just way too sour. But I feel like I it's way too sour for a Goza. It's way too sour for a Goza. I, my, the beer that got me into craft beer, as you said, mentioned to me, or Alex, is one of the sourest beers you could possibly buy, and that's Duchess de Brion. I love that beer. It sour, but Adam also Sherry. vinegary. Sour, but vinegary. It's a Flemish... Flemish red. Fred, yeah, Flemish red. Hmm. So good. Aged bottles of it. Like... No problem. Took it to Super Bowl parties, and no one's like, what the fuck are you drinking? I'm like, I am drinking something amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so pe speaking of sours, uh, relevant to Alex, Dan, and myself, we went to BCTC recently. Belgium comes You're to Cooperstown. Down. I was. Omegang <laughs> makes a you. great <laughs> sour that they paired with. They had, the fir they had a five-course dinner, if you get the VIP package. The first course was charcuterie, and that included mm -hmm. a pale sour. 
which I thought was fantastic. Yes. Perfectly mixed with that. It wasn't mouth parking at all. It had some tartness to it, but there's a lot right. of other flavors going on. That was just Stupid great. Man, it's it's one can. of the greatest examples of you what know, you the, can do with the with the sour. It almost bothers me that it's called a pale sour. It should be called a pale tart. Because it wasn't <laughs> sour, it was tart. That's fair. That's and very I also fair. think I don't that know when you said tart, I just wanted to like just slap your cheek. <laughs> For shame. I don't know why. Okay. Just wanted to... You can have one later, don't worry. <laughs> um, I love that pale sour that they did, though. Um, I thought that it paired a lot better with the seafood course they did last year than oh, what they yeah. did this year. I, that's the only complaint I... Well, it's the only complaint I had about the pairings this year is that i wish i would have had that seafood course again with that beer and that's not even a complaint about this year it's just right we know what's possible with that sour right see and i'm on the other side i thought the seafood that they did that trout was 10 times better than the seafood they put out last year yes but that seafood was an appetizer course not a main course. Yes, yeah, it was a seafood salad appetizer. It was absolutely fantastic. We're going to get our food, and I'm not going to go there. So. <laughs> <laughs> the fish was delicious, if you like fish. Yes. If you don't like fish, I'm sure it was awful, because it was literally a whole fish. It was literally a whole fish. The, the face, too. It, 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 it stared at you. As the guy who <laughs> suffered through serious FOMO, as you guys <laughs> went there, and I did not. Um... I do love how sours always seem to bring up this conversation with people, though. It's the harsh debate of, do you want a beer that's tart, that is sweet, that is, to some people, delicious, yet others find it repulsive. I think it's a, I love how, con- not, I don't want to say controversial, but how you can seriously debate, to whatever end, sour beers with people. Because you'll find people that are just like, I can't drink them. They're disgusting. And other people are like, they're delicious. And someone like myself was like, I enjoy there one now and then. one attribute that is good. It's not even, that always makes me turn down a sour. Does it make the muscles in my jaw hurt? <laughs> <laughs> if I can say yes to that question, no, I don't want it. It's no longer enjoyable. It's that weird, it, it's that astringency, not even puckering. It almost makes your jaw cramp. Mm-hmm. Kind of that weird lemonade mouth that yes. just yeah. keeps, then like you're just hot. I'm like I'm spitting. I'm like this is not mm-hmm. fun anymore. <laughs> Interesting because that's what she said. Uh, uh, cue the drum roll sound effect. <laughs> Don't replace that with the drum roll sound effect. Uh, <laughs> I liked it. Replace <laughs> Alex with the drum roll sound effect. <laughs> Wait, right here. <laughs> Gone. <laughs> I will be yeah, very disappointed I, if you don't. <laughs> <laughs> I I do agree, Tim. It is like uh, IPAs. If you're talking with just an average group of people, if some <laughs> if some people like IPAs, really anyone that does, you can have a conversation <laughs> with IPAs about. The sour crack <laughs> Any, <to> Tim. <laughs> <laughs> Any anyone that doesn't like an IPA, it's just an immediate. It's either you like them and you can talk about it and all the different types, or you don't like it and IPAs aren't a thing for you. You don't like hoppy beers, blah blah blah. With sours, it is more of a gradient. It's not just, I like it or I don't like it. It's, oh, I like these kinds of sours. Or I like some sours. Or I had this beer that's called a sour, mm-hmm. but it wasn't very sour. Or yeah. or I love the beers that you know make you look like a Warhead poster. You don't <laughs> think, though, that there's a, a gradient for IPAs, too? Especially not, with not the that hazy IPAs that are oh, out there. No. Because I, like, I feel like a lot of people get on board with the these hazy IPAs that are real fruit forward with less bitterness. I feel like they like those, but the second they go to a different IPA that's more of an American style, even on the lower IBU scale, what I'm missing? they're not fan. They're not a fan of it. I I haven't really experienced that. It's been people who it, some people who say they like IPAs, but they're not maybe not you know the super into them, or even when they say they like IPAs, they're like, oh, I like IPAs like Hayburner from Big Ditch. Um, it's very very juicy, high higher ABV uh, mm-hmm. IPA, something like that. But it never. It's either I do like IPAs or I don't like IPAs generally, and that's just my experience talking sure. to people. Obviously, not beer lovers because almost all beer lovers are gonna say I like IPAs, and then the discussion goes from there. 
But just talking with anybody, it's, oh, I like IPAs like these, or I don't like IPAs. Whereas with sours, there is more of that gradient of, oh, I don't, except for this one, or except for these two. I can see that. And, like, I'm kind of with Dan, like, I'm not a huge sour guy, but I mostly, like, I'll try them. But give me a give me a four ounce sample of it. I don't want a full glass, because a full glass is gonna really hit me wrong. And I it's a palate cleanser. Give me a exactly. taste of something to clear my palate for the exactly. beer. Exactly. I use it I more hate... so as a palate cleanser to try something new, and then get to something new again. Because you drink so many of something that you really do like that eventually your just palate just gets totally blown out, and right. you're just like. Even this I'm not even enjoying anymore. I'm just drinking it to drink it because it's in front of me and it's a great IPA. And why would I not? I'm crazy not to. Right. So So some sours that when it have comes become... to a sour like that. Like I'm like, oh this is good. Mm-hmm. But like after four, five, six ounces of it, do I wanna finish the other ten ounces as it warms up? I usually don't. So I just had the last sips of the glass for this one, the Bidwell. That was actually fairly pleasant. It had warmed up. I've been holding the glass. And the, the sourness the had yeah. rescinded a little bit. Uh, but all the rest of the flavors, the sweetness that was up front is still there. So this actually is a sour that does have some uh, staying power to it if you have a whole glass. And there's no brewer's yeast used in this. That's this crazy. Is all, they actually say on the label, to our knowledge, <laughs> this beer is the first to be sold Using native yeast collected from Western New York, I, I think that's I think that's pretty awesome. That yeah. like this is literally buffalo on a glass. This is this is buffalo, like they literally did a very simple beer and said, "Let buffalo take over." Cheers to and you. And this buffalo. is what we have. And with that, let's move on to the last bit of buffalo we have tonight. All right, for this next couple of beers that I went out and I, gra- I gathered. Um, I headed over to Rusty Nickel in West Seneca, New York, and right now I'm super impressed. I kind of went out of my comfort zone for this one, and I am really happy I did. This did not disappoint me at all. We're um, really happy you did. Yes. Um, the So when I was down there, got a really cool chance. Um, one of the girls there who was part of the original Female series that they do now um, was there, and uh, we had actually, she remembered us. Um, we had gotten a chance to go to Beerology one year, and they were there promoting the Female series, and we had the Glass Ceiling Smoked Plum Ale, I think it was at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, and with the smoked being a key feature, this time I picked up a growler of the Peated Scotch Ale. Um, I have been on a rather lower, hoppy kick lately, and I have been going towards the maltier side, and it, this is fantastic to me. It's the right amount of smoke. It's a little sweet, smooth. They did it for me. This is, I have something to go back for. <laughs> yeah, this is great. I'm getting a lot of smoky character to it, but that aftertaste is fantastic. It's in the nose as well as the taste, mm-hmm. too. You can smell peat in it. Mm-hmm. It's a really smooth finish, too. This is yeah. my new fire time beer. Yes. Oh, yeah. I really want to drink this around a bonfire <laughs> with a cigar. Yes. And I, steak. I do wish I had and a cigar steak. right now. Yes, of course, steak. All right, we're going to have a breakfast podcast <laughs> where Dan makes steak and eggs, and we're going to have a bonfire podcast where Dan makes steak. <laughs> and we have cigars. And we have cigars. Yes. <laughs> Hold us to that. Message us. Or don't. Harass us. <laughs> until we do so. Or don't. We're still going to do it regardless of what you people say. <laughs> So, for at least from what I understand, uh, I think Rusty Nickel opened up in, I think, 2015? About three years ago? Sounds about right. Um, and they're actually... They have been around for a while. Yeah. And hence why we mentioned all the expansions going on in Buffalo. They're getting ready to open up their second location, like we said, um, over in the city, finally. And they, I think for that location, they're trying to get out a special, which I found out. They're trying to do a triple for a special release for that new mm. location. That's going to be mm. something that's going on there. And... With Tri- this, sorry, triple Belgian. I was just told triple. That's all the information I was given. <laughs> I would assume it. Yes, Belgian though. A Belgian triple. Yeah, that's what I'm going with. Um, but mm. one of the cool things is that you know I can always get behind a brewery that has a passion, and I can I'm always willing to see when there's a change, and there's in the structure, and there's an improvement. 
I can respect that all day long. And so going in, all of a sudden I walked back into this place and kind of got taken back. I was like, wow, you guys have a lot more than when I was here prior back. That's, I hate to say it, that's kind of why I didn't come back a little bit. And then I'm like, all right, show me what you got. <laughs> you show guys, me what you yes. got. <laughs> And you guys I like and what you got. <laughs> you guys delivered. You delivered. So um, we were actually just before we came back. We were uh, started this set, this recording session. I guess we were talking about it and uh, how everyone in the industry is doing IPAs, and it's not because you know, not necessarily that they want to. It sells. Yes. It's everybody is looking for an IPA, and how for me personally, I'm kind of getting drowned out. Like. Okay, I get it. Hazy IPA, New England IPA, Pale IPA. Mm -hmm. There's always something, and I'm not saying that they're not bad. I just want to see what else you can do. One cool thing about this is they had one of everything. There's a cream ale. There's a scotch ale. There's a stout. There's a pale ale. There's something weird. They're doing beer cocktails. I was like, you're just being different at least. Yeah. Well, their motto is brewed a little bit differently. Or different. Can, and, it's it's yeah. similar to that. It's and something along those lines. I can respect that, the, and they they did a great job. And this was this is I I'm gonna go in a corner now and just you know I'm taking my growler with me. No, you Dan. Guys, whoa, whoa, you, fill you, me up. You first. guys can finish the show. <laughs> no, man, it's, it's, it's not your basement. I bought it. <laughs> <laughs> that corner needs to stay clean. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you're saying though about the uh, the IPAs. Like, I mean, they do get a little. They start wearing on you after a little bit. But like, yes, every brewery has to have IPAs on their menu yeah. because they sell, and it is still the biggest seller for every brewery. Absolutely. It's marketable. But yeah. one thing that Rusty Nickel really does is they do have a wide variety, and like there are some really good ones on their menu. And along the lines of that triple. I am really excited hearing that because they have a double, which I know their head brewer uses a secret ingredient in, sure. that I really like ah. their double a lot. So I'm really interested to see what triple comes out of this. Yes. Oh, no, I'm intrigued. Yeah. yeah. it's they've got, Their double is fen- is phenomenal. They've got a ton of events coming up in the future, along with their new opening and everything like that that I can't wait for. We were talking about they're planning to do, I was told, a Scotch Cigars and Steak Night. They're trying to do, you know, they're, they're doing a lot of local things, trying to keep other local businesses involved, which I thought was great when it comes down to the food they serve, the products that they use, the liquor that they have in their bar. Is, it, everything is centered around Buffalo. Right here, Western New York, that is it. And I'm like, you know what? Kudos. Hey, hey, hey. I don't know. Let's go, Buffalo. Let's go, Buffalo. And it's the Bill season, actually. There you go. Um, It works. As I'm wearing a Bill's hat. hat, Yes. Um, (laughs) On a, uh, you know, audio only. uh, No one can see. Those that can't see his hat. We assure you, listeners, he is wearing a Bill's hat. (laughs) (laughs) I I don't think that our listeners know that I'm a Bill's fan, though. Not at all. Yeah. No, <laughs> I've never sh- talked about everyone them at all. on this show that happens to be a, a Buffalo fan. Yeah, it just it works. <laughs> Hence the Buffalo focus. But it is, I mean, this. I, I West Seneca was a town I, I didn't grow up in. I grew up in Alden, East Aurora area, and but I was uh, my aunt lives in West Seneca, my aunt and uncle, and I was babysat by them a lot. So I have a lot of fondness for the area. So when I heard they had a brewery, I had to try it when I came home. And I loved it. I think, Dan, you met me out with my family. We went to Rusty Nickel. My, my first visit to Rusty Nickel. And I liked it a lot just because of the variety they had and the mixed the brewery, beer cocktail or brew yeah, tails. They were starting. It. I can't. I'm never going to fault a brewery for starting. Yeah. I can't. Hey, kudos. Go for it. And the head brewers that started have a hell of a lot of experience. When If you get a chance to check out their site, read their story. It's really cool. Just it. And then they went through. They put together an all-female brewing, I guess, at brewers. I don't know how, what the t- multiple term for brewers would be. I <laughs> brewers. <laughs> Bre- I guess, yeah. Well, Brewettes. Bre- Bre- oh, I like that. Brewettes. <laughs> Brewettes. I like that. Rusty Nickel, please take that. Yeah. <laughs> all yours. Um, but, and they put this together, and they were promoted again. And then now I, you know, from what I've been told is, you know, actually Katie had said, now they with the expansion, with what they're doing, they've got more staff, they realize they can't really you, you can't really shut ideas out. They're 
going all in, it seems like. It's it's all on their employment and their employees that are coming up with all these different ideas, and they're just keeping them a series, and they're coming up with some really cool beers. And mm-hmm. I'm like, all right, game on. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, you know, I'm kind of now excited, and I'm like, ooh, new, another local brewery that I can keep visiting and just find myself sitting at a bar all day. <laughs> and it's local enough that we all seem to know somebody. My friend Emily works there, and that was one of the other draws for me to go there. And uh, I, I love the the idea of just the, the all-female brewer. I thought that was just kind of a really cool idea. Uh, and I'm probably delicious. I haven't had any of those yet. But. Well, on to the next beer, because I did buy us another beer. But oh, we're going to take a minute, because there's a, a growler of the peat and scotch ale, and it's really fucking good, and I'm not ready for it yet. Yeah, so we're, we're gonna have to cap it for now, <laughs> yeah, just we'll so we can get to the next beer, yes. and then we're gonna. End so up so Dan, to Dan says we're gonna take a minute, but for everyone listening, there, there's, it's just here's the next part, and oh, yeah. we're back, boys and girls. Yeah. After our long break of no seconds, okay, it's like you time heard. barely passed. So Dan, tell tell us about the second beer that you picked up from Rusty Nickel. So this beer is, I went in and I just asked, give me the flagship. And they actually have several, but they said their biggest one is Slice of Havens, and it's an Imperial Cream Ale. Actually, sorry, Imperial Creamsicle Cream Ale, at, and sitting at 9.8%. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> you tell sorry. us now. Sorry, Jim. <laughs> uh, be a little late tonight. <laughs> um, usually, actually, so the cool thing about, uh, I actually do kind of like about um, Rusty Nickel is the fact that they will do uh, kind of a beer cocktail. So they actually do a float out of this. They'll put in a, um, a little, I think is it, they'll put in like a little creamsicle in there, or they serve it with a little orange zest or something like that, which is kind of, you know, kind of nice. You know, I think it's something that's a light, easy drink. Well, I shouldn't say light and easy drink, I guess, with a 9.8% beer. Um, but but it, comes that that it comes across that way. It comes across that way. Um, that people can just enjoy. I've had it with the uh, the slice of like orange zest in there, and it does really just like, do amplify orange. that orange. And I don't think it needs the amplification of the zest, but it's you a nice little addition. I do get the creamsicle after. Yeah, the, the, the vanilla comes the through. Vanilla comes it really does. Strong. The orange. You know what I think it is? Is that you know there's we experienced it. Uh, you know. We weren't gonna get it. We're not getting into it. But we all, uh, three of us, went to BCTC, and I will mm. say one of the coolest things about the dinner we got to go to is they played with your senses a little bit. And one of the coolest things they did was, in the center of every table, they had centerpieces with kind of mm. herbs and lemons and oranges. The thing that I noticed at one point was that every all the the urns that they were sitting in were frosted. Didn't pick up out that what was in it keeping it cold i just figured yeah oh, they put it, no they're refrigerated oh they're keeping the th- things fresh whatever the coolest thing they could have done come by first thing right off the bat come pour pitches of water there's dry ice the fragrance you get from the essential oils coming out of the citrus just covered the entire dining area in that so the fact that they've already got a beer here that has a strong citrus aroma has a nice vanilla characteristic to throw in a little lemon zest where you or sorry orange zest where you can get a little more essential oils out of it just adds to your nose right it's not meant to add taste or it's not it's it's a garnish but you're trying to add a little nuance to it so i can at least see what they're where they're going that because you can get a lot of something out of just a little bit of that oil and there's plenty of flavor there that they don't oh, need absolutely. to add any kind of like anything to this beer. I mean, it's I think it's great by itself. But it's delicious. When you add that that little bit of zest, all of a sudden it's just like holy crap! That yeah. orange just hits you in the face. It's really ratcheting up the sensory experience of drinking this beer. Are you saying it's mm-hmm. ratchet? Are you, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> I am now. <laughs> but you do get the orange, but I can see it where that little bit of just orange oil would totally just yeah. put this above. Give they do the on the nose. They do zest a lot of oranges for this beer. And for it being a flagship, I have to say kudos Rusty Nickel because that that is dedication. Mm-hmm. It's a bold I, it's it's something I appreciate. That yeah. that's hard work that people 
it's don't a necessarily know them. Yes. I like the fact that I have. There's, you know what? I have. I will say it. The fact that it's been. If if the what I was trying to research was right, fifteen years. Every year I've gone back. I can actually say that every year. I will say a little disappointed. A little disappointed. Finally, I went in. I had two beers that I can actually say. Okay. Now I'm ready to go back and say, what else you got? Because I want to know what else is on your list. You guys are ex- they're exciting me. I'm like, that's all I'm looking for in a brewery. I already liked talking to everybody there. There's a passion. They're bringing in new people. They're, they show a love and they show a great knowledge of everything that's going on. Um, they're involved with the community. They're tr- keeping up. They're doing, um, they're actually on TV apparently tonight. You're not going to see it because this isn't live. But <laughs> with uh, they're they're involved, not just in the community politically. The New York State uh, legislation going on. I think it's Bill A one one two or three or something. It's weird. Um, going on right now. That's trying to pass legislation for taxation again. Yeah, Chris is on this because yeah, I, I want. I'm trying to stick Chris on right now because <laughs> if I get anything wrong on the fact checks on this, he will shut me down. <laughs> Um, but also raising the age of, um, we're not talking drinking service and production from 18 to 21, which means essentially if you do that, anyone behind a, you in, in New York state, you can serve if you're 18, mm. you can be a server, mm-hmm. you can't drink it, but you can serve it to other people. That's how you make your wage. That's how you make your tips, but also schooling right now. We've got a bunch of programs, ECC, NCC with brewing projects you're 18 they don't want like that shuts that involvement down production wise mm. which i don't want to see you rely on that like a lot of places rely on that just young workers and things like that and they should stay out of that huh just one man's opinion state shouldn't get involved <laughs> <laughs> so i mean you know go out, local once again local look out for it. it it's just nice to see involvement passion growth and some really good things coming out of a brewery i can't i have to respect i have the utmost respect for what's going on right now in west seneca yeah like, cheers yeah. to that cheers to rusty nick yeah i mean think about it how many times we sip a beer it's from you know san diego it's from michigan it's mm-hmm. from you know wherever else we are drinking fantastic beers brewed within a half hour drive Hey, even mm-hmm. it took less me, than that. Twenty took minutes. Me seven minutes to get there. All right, right. I live in North Buffalo, yeah. so a little bit longer. Yes, but, but it took you. It's an eight-minute drive for you to get the Thin Man. Yes, it's it's awesome. Alex gets to go to Twelve Gates, and it's less than what five minutes. I can walk there in yeah. ten. Chris, <laughs> Chris is around the corner from any place, pretty much. Forty-two. He's like, I get to go here. <laughs> it's it's great. The more. People are showing up. Better it seems to get. I'm excited to see what Buffalo's got. I want to see what Buffalo's got because it's going to be delicious. That's all. I, I don't know where to go. It's Someone the, shut it's me up. The here, ul- here. It's here, the here. ultimate. Oh, argu- to Buffalo. It's the ultimate argument for competition brews greatness. Because we are watching. <laughs> you need I, I competition. See all the different things. Fantastic. That yeah, exactly. Winners and losers, <laughs> people. <laughs> You're seeing breweries that are going to come out. Like we did the interview at Big Ditch, where we're like, "Wow, this double dry hop tape burner is fantastic." We're having a uh, what was this? A cream ale from yeah. Rusty Nickel. That's creamsicle delicious. cream ale. The creamsicle cream ale. The peated Scotch ale was fantastic. Stuff that's gonna come out of these breweries is gonna be better because they're gonna go. You know what we want? We want people. Yeah, it's great. And they're not viciously competitive, so you're never yeah. gonna hear the guys from Big Ditch insult the people from Rusty Nickel. But you do want people to come to your place. So right. they're gonna brew something that's maybe a little bit different, a little bit better than the I other mean, place. One guy brews something that's really good, and trust me. All the brewers know when someone else has got something really good. Well, there's that next Facebook guy's going, pages that post true. all about it. Oh, yeah. But the, they're also involved. They're watching it. Mm-hmm. But as soon as they see it, someone's on it going, here's mine. Let me take a crack at <laughs> right. it. What mm-hmm. you got? And the next guy's after that. Not yeah. to mention that, like, I mean, not just competitively within the industry, but... They're always looking to do better themselves. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, they're always looking to upgrade. Like, I mean, they took Hayburner, which was their best-selling IPA, and double dry hopped it. And I've had heard a couple people, actually today I talked to a few of people, 
that said that the double dry hopped Hayburner was the best beer they ever produced. I tend to agree because I fucking love it. Yeah, it was delicious. We've yeah, been aced. Stay down there. Yeah, stay down there. You can say Actually, go in your corner. Dan, <laughs> get in your corner. Yeah. Take your peanuts. He was at home. Dan is hiding. I like Hayburner. Everyone likes Hayburner. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's a good German supported beer. I like original Hayburn. Uh, yeah, pl- better yeah, than double. Cool. <laughs> better than double dry hop. Out of their series, their Lockhouse series. That's not a part of the Lock series. No, no I know it's not. But when we had it, you gave me one, and I was very grateful. Delicious beer. It, double dry hop was a delicious beer. You'll I never will. get one again from me. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> he just killed it. No, it was a delicious beer. There's nothing wrong with the beer. I'm just disagreeing with the people that have. I'm not trying to put anybody down. No, fuck this. We're going back to praising Buffalo. They're all good beers. That's it. Mm. Something <laughs> to put which me on spot, you fucker. Doesn't You're the really one creeping down below the bar. <laughs> More ways than Sorry, me. audio only podcast. Bait me, will you? <laughs> So, something that doesn't really apply to the beers we've had tonight, but also the spirit of experimentation, and it's really, it's okay for a brewery to fail as well, because mm-hmm. they feel a brewer could have a great idea, or have some Beep! kind of, <laughs> they, they could do a pilot batch, a small batch, something local, mm-hmm. um, try it out. Turns out nobody really is that big of a fan of it, and maybe the beer is produced exactly like the brewer wanted. It just didn't turn out too well, but there. it's it's still they're they're gonna it's not gonna tank the brewery. They're still gonna be fine. There was a brewery that I went to that they released a specific beer, and I went and I was like, okay, this is okay for the style that it was, and I started talking to a couple people at the brewery, and they were like, yeah. Didn't really hit the mark for us. A couple days later, go back, wasn't on tap anymore. Brand new beer, not on tap. Okay, where did that go? Because I was actually kind of enjoying it. It wasn't the exact, didn't really hit the mark for the style, but it was still a good beer. About a month and a half later, came back out. Aged it in the cooler, came back out with a different name. All of a sudden, people were going crazy for it. No one was liking it at first, but came back out and everyone was loving it. Because it was still a good beer. Happy mistake. Mm-hmm. Rename it. There's a lot to that be said happen. for, and you know, Alex and I are home brewers. We've worked on projects together. There's a lot to be said for, hey, let it sit a little bit. It's too young. There's no, we don't know what's going on. Why does it look like this? Fruit punch Colch. Don't <laughs> call it. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, this is amazing. And you've got a bunch of friends who are throwing up on the yard because they're all drunk because they kicked an entire keg of it. And it's purple. And it's what the purple. fuck is that? How we did that, we don't know. <laughs> so much purple throw, throw up that night. Someone's passing oh. out in a river. Hey, where did he go? We don't know, but it's flooding. <laughs> Why is he dead? <laughs> As you erase all those images out of your mind. <laughs> Good luck. Um, I think we all just need to appreciate how incredible it is to be in a city that's had this rebirth. I mean, maybe it's different for me coming from I moved away and came back. <laughs> sorry, sorry, I did. But welcome but, back. Thank you. You've to just come him. back. I, oh, I never <laughs> I'm forgot. I'm just kidding. We never <laughs> I came back to his room. <laughs> I know that. But just to be around and see, like, okay, we were just making a list of breweries we could go visit and go get oh, crawlers and growlers planned. from. Oh, yeah, that's, the list is, keeps growing, and that's... To me, that's just incredible because I so many breweries. Like we're talking about people experimenting, and that's so cool because I've been to a few breweries where they clearly they had a guy who could brew. He made an IPA, he made a stout, he made a maybe a Scotch ale, and maybe a sour, and that was it. And it was fine. Here we have breweries like Rusty Nickel who are going and saying, "Yeah, we're going to try this too. We're going to go out on a limb." In a way, just to mention them as we always do, Dogfish does. They try something. Of they it. experiment, Such and that stuff is so cool. Well, That's what this is about. It's right. an art. It's incredible. Think about what we had earlier before the Rusty Nickel. We had the Bidwell Wild mm-hmm. from Big Ditch. Delicious. They literally put fruit into this beer that they brewed and said, well, here's hoping this fruit has the right mix of bacteria and yeast on it that is going to ferment this beer and give us a product that we can put on the market. Mm-hmm. And Holy shit! It did not dis- disappoint. Not at all. No. Yeah, and if you want to connect, if you have the beer, you want to connect with it. Go to the Bidwell Market Saturday mornings. You'll see the probably the stalls where the fruit came from. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like we said, there's a there's a common theme that it's been noticed. Other than it's Thin Man's sentiment, 
inspiration in a liquid state. Rusty Nickel, brewed just a little different. These are the people you got in the brewing industry that you need to watch out for. Yes, go there in frequently. Buffalo. Go. No brewery you're never going to like 100%. Actually, maybe you will. But there's something, and it's mm-hmm. going to intrigue you, and you're going to go, I want that one. I, you have it, and you're going to go have a second glass, and a third, and then somewhere down the line, say, hey, you might want to try this, and you're going to like that one. And you're going to be turned on to the next thing. And that's when your palate starts to shift and change and grow. And then you get turned on to more products. You get turned on to more beers. And when it stays local, you keep going local. And you go to the next person and the next person, and everyone benefits. Or how many of us have that friend we've gone to a bar with, a brewery with, and they've said, well, I'm not really a beer guy, or I'm not really an IPA guy or a stout guy, and you go... There's a beer for everyone, yes. unless you really can't drink You turn to Barney Stitts and say, challenge drink. accepted. Unless you have silly. <laughs> unless you have silly. <laughs> <laughs> then don't then drink there's beer. not a beer for you. Don't, 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 don't do that. Don't do that. Uh, uh, because uh, sorghum yes. does not <laughs> produce <laughs> good beer. But there's some hidden secrets to that, too. But then again, Clarity Firm actually reduces gluten to a certain state where people with celiacs might be able to drink it. Mm. Don't take this as something you should do, but there's options. And actually, gluten-free beer is actually getting better. Like anything. Yeah. Give and it time. Always people changing. will find a better... Keep answer. searching. Keep going. Yeah. Keep getting inspired. Keep drinking. And to any Buffalo brewers listening to us right now, keep messing around with whatever you're doing. Because if tonight is any example of what's to come, I'm excited. And we love it. Yes. Yes. You guys won me over. <laughs> Good on you, Rusty Nickel. Thin Man. Big Ditch. Flying Bison. Flying Bison. Flying Bison. Flying Bison. Bison. Cheers Sorry. to you uh, as well. O- OG. Of the the OG. Yeah. We Paris. forgot the OGs. We God did. damn it, yes. Tim. I'm sorry. I'm new. <laughs> it happens. Maybe. And I'm... On, on that point, I think we're down with the podcast. So uh, you so know, we don't have to part do what one we've been drinking because you know what we've been drinking. Absolutely, local. maybe next time. Yeah, it's still gonna be local. Yeah, I true. Love yep. Absolutely. So this was part one of a uh, Buffalo Brewers series that we're doing. We're featuring brand new uh, beers that we've had on the podcast. Haven't had the beers before. And uh, getting on some new breweries, too, that we haven't had an opportunity to feature on the podcast yet. So we'll be doing this for the next couple of podcasts as well. Looking forward to it. Really get oh, to explore so the Western New York so area. Yeah. So special shout out and thank you to Flying Bison, Thin Man, Big Ditch, and Rusty Nickel as well. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Thank All right. You. Look forward to the next time. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, Buffalo.